Nessa girl, let me tell y'all something. This has been one hell of a week. Naya Rivera's body found in the river. John Travolta's wife passed away. Tory Lane supposedly shot Megan Thee Stallion in the foot. Tamar attempts suicide. The governor is suing Keisha. Blanche Bottoms. Viacom drops Nick Cannon. Portia and Yandy get arrested for advocating for Breonna Taylor at a protest. And now Evelyn crying over Chad Ocho Cinco Johnson. Baby, I thought I was going to be a rich white woman today and go shopping and fool la la all down to the Houston's. But y'all asked for to have me down to the news studio all day. Right now, we about to talk about Evelyn and Chad ass. Want to talk about it? Here it go. Nessa girl, I was sitting on the sofa yesterday minding my business like I oh, matter of fact, I'm lying. I was driving in the car minding my business like I was always do, getting ready to go to a friend birthday party and they had asked me to stop by Walgreens and get two bags of ice. My neighbor rolled with me so while he was inside Walgreens getting the bags of ice, I'm just scrolling through Instagram and I saw Evelyn Lozada on her Instagram. She looked like her face was puffy from crying and in her, in her caption it said, you know, I'm sorry to all my friends, my family, my fans of the show, those who support me. And so before watching the video or knowing what was going on, my flipping ass just got in the comments and I said, girl, what you done did now? A move I actually regret and I do apologize, Evelyn Lozada, because I did not know what was going on before I had made that comment. And it is insensitive considering what was going on. But come to find out, Evelyn Lozada was sitting up in the car, all puffy face, swollen up, crying because she had to relive this Chad Ochocinco, Chad Ochocinco domestic violence situation once again, and I'm here to talk about it. So the story starts out when a fan asked a social media loving 42 year old athlete, what's the secret? How do you stay so positive? Was it therapy? Not being funny, really asking for myself. And Chad responded, I lost my temper for once in three seconds and it cost me a lifetime worth of work. I got it all back plus some other things and a second chance and nothing will ever get me out of my happy place again. Now, let me pause right there. And reading that comment, I'm not going to lie to you, I felt empowered. I was like, Good for you, black man. Like, yes, you made a mistake. You almost lost everything. You learned from it. And we haven't really heard much about Chad's name in the media for anything negative since then. I thought all was about to be fair in love and war and that I was going to go to the party and fool la la. Well, apparently not. Evelyn Lozada then, upset as a result of this, took to her social media and said, the problem, Evelyn says Chad is, isn't telling the truth and is causing her tremendous pain. For this man to sit up here and say that he lost his temper for three seconds is infuriating to me. Lozada said, it's messages like this, tweets or whatever the hell it was that triggers me. People read this on social media and are coming at me about Oh, you made this man lose his job. It's like you're not, it's like you're going to speak the truth. I want you to speak the truth as to the situation was. It wasn't the first time. It was not the first time. And one thing I'm always going to do is live in my truth. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether it's ugly. I'm not going to let anybody take away my fucking truth and put the perception out there for a pity party as if you made one mistake. Evelyn continued, I'm trying to move on from this, but as a victim, how am I supposed to move on? What happened to me that day and other days, I didn't deserve. I didn't deserve that. So, let me start out by saying this, right? When Evelyn started on her rant, 
I think a lot of people were like, oh God, here she go with this shit again. And I'm going to tell you why. Evelyn's persona does not match her victimhood, right? And please bear with me because and let me just go ahead and say this at the beginning before I finish my point. I'm actually in support of Evelyn, but just bear with me because I'm trying to break down the psychology of it all. Evelyn's persona does not match her victimhood. As much as we've seen Evelyn be a bully and sling a Moet bottle across the room and almost hit somebody in the head, the way she bullied Cece and patted her pussy all in Port to Vioxx and talking about how she got good credit and good pussy, the way she don't attack and jumped on people for multiple seasons of Basketball Wives and made millions of dollars doing it, it really makes it hard for people to feel sympathetic for Evelyn when she cries in this situation. That being said, it still does not negate, nor does it take away from the fact that she was domestically abused by a man. Now, here is the issue that a lot of people are having. When Chad went down for what he went down for the headbutting situation after she found condoms, the way Evelyn, her team, and the media portrayed the story to the people is that this was a one-time affair. As much access as Evelyn had to her Twitter, as much anger as she held in her heart, as many platforms as she's had to express what it is she needed to say during that time, Never once have we heard that he was repeatedly abusing you. The narrative then and up until now has always been that it was a one-time affair that happened in the car. So yes, it is a bit perplexing and alarming to us now as fans and people who follow y'all on social media to now be given this piece of information that is very germane to the story. And again, I am not trying to imply that it did not happen. The Me Too movement showed us and taught us that when a woman says that something happened to her, that it's kind of insensitive for us to assume that it didn't and scrutinize the hell out of her and perhaps we should be a bit more sensitive as to listening to her and scrutinize the hell out of the person that's being accused. Um, I wasn't there. I do not know. I will say this. Evelyn made a very valid point in her post saying, I'm the one that's the victim. I'm the one that's got the scar in my head. And while I do not think Chad had any intentions of slighting Evelyn, marginalizing Evelyn, trying to re-victimize Evelyn, or hurt Evelyn, the fact that social media launched a war against her basically saying, bitch, you fucked up this whole man life over that petty ass situation and we all fucking know you probably hit him first. Based on your behavior, we all probably know you was fucking fighting him too and you shouldn't have been fighting a man because let's face it, that is the narrative. And Evelyn, unfortunately, because of your past behavior, whether it's true or false, it is not hard for any reasonable person to believe that your ass was in that car fighting Chad too. Again, I was not there. I don't know it to be the truth. However, based on your past behaviors, it is not reasonable to believe that y'all were in there fighting. I'm not going to... I, I personally... And again, this is just based on the aggressive behavior that we have witnessed on television for years. 
I do not believe for one second at any given point you was in there washing dishes and he would just walk in there and start beating your ass. What I do believe is that y'all were in there fighting and it's possible that he could have initiated the physical altercation. I do believe y'all used to be in there fighting and because he is an athlete, he got the best of your ass and he is a man. It don't make it right, but it gives the story context. One last thing I want to say in closing, and there's two examples that I want to use. There was this girl I went to school with, high school. She was real classy based. I mean, just, she was, she was grown woman classy in 11th grade. It later came out when we got to college that she was a hoe. And they was like, she was a big ass hoe. And the gag is nobody believed it. They was like, not that girl. Not that girl. Child please, y'all hoes lying. That girl too classy. She carried herself in such a way it's not even believable. Lo and behold, just through experiences and contacts and, and coming in contact with other people, we later found out that she was hoeing around a little bit and she was a little loose with that thing. But the moral of the story and what I learned is you want to carry yourself in such a way that when you do have an indiscretion or two, that it is hard for people to believe. The second person that I want to bring into this mix is Cynthia Bailey. Nene insists on letting us know that Cynthia is not all things that we see on TV. This is an attack on Cynthia. This is because I've been around the world enough to know that all ain't what it seems. And yes, same point with Cynthia. Cynthia carries herself publicly in such a way that when a bitch say something negative about Cynthia, you have to think twice. You be like, uh, I ain't in no rush to believe that. Moral of the story, Evelyn, is your past behaviors have made it very hard for people to just jump on your side without any sort of scrutiny. And I understand that the scrutiny and the question asking and the interrogating could further victimize someone because you are the victim and were the victim. Here is my closing point because I don't want anybody to misconstrue that I am taking up for Chad and somehow trying to blame Evelyn for the situation. I feel bad for Evelyn. I don't think any man should put his hands on a woman in a domestic violence situation. And on the flip side of things, I don't think any woman should put her hands on a goddamn man. When it comes to me, domestic violence is not about gender because oftentimes women use this whole gender shit as license to take it too far with men. Getting up in their face, hands, pushing them, and you got to understand every nigga wasn't raised right. I'm from Miami, Florida, where I have watched women walk through the flea market and a nigga try to holler at him, and she'd be like, I don't want to holler. I don't want to holler. And because the nigga was embarrassed, he spit on her on her face. I have witnessed that. My homegirls in Miami will tell you they mothers taught them when you walking through the flea market or through the mall and these dudes try to holler at you, just be very nice and pleasant because they'll get ignorant on your ass. I'm just saying that to say all these niggas out here wasn't raised right. So to think that you can fool out lot and do all this in people's face and somebody not slap the shit out of you, baby, chivalry is dead. That girl been dead. She died in, in 79. You got to be more careful in these streets. And lastly, if ever it comes to a situation where you want to receive some sort of sympathy for being abused, you've got to make sure that you don't have a reputation of somebody, of you being an abuser. Because I'm not going to lie to you, Heaven. I am pretty sure there are people like Jen and other people who have caught the brunt 
of your attacks that are probably sitting somewhere laughing and saying, good, that's what the bitch deserves. That's not my sentiment, but you get what I'm saying. There's a learning lesson in this all, and I am sorry that this has happened to Evelyn. I am sorry that she's got to relive this. Um, in a perfect world, I wish Chad would have just left the shit alone. It was tone deaf. It was tone deaf. And Chad, I do think that if you had been putting your hands on Evelyn multiple times and that the narrative was that you had only did it once and that that narrative was riding and, and that's what we were going with in the general public that you probably should have left this topic and subject matter alone because you poked the sleeping bear and bitch now she's out. I'm not going to lie to you, when it comes to the message being tone deaf, Chad, it really translated like, yeah, I did something, I hit her, that bitch tried to ruin my life, but ha 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 ha, I got it all back and then some. That's really how that message feels, and I don't think that that was Chad's intent, but that was how it came off. Y'all, I'm going to be in this studio today talking about all types of shit because these hoes in here got it going on. And I'm actually going live at 2 p.m. with Dr. Heavenly on her YouTube channel to talk about this Nick Cannon situation. Y'all be sure to tune in. That's all I have. Ain't got no more. And I'll call you later. Bye.